Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are chatting with Ellen Shapiro. Hello, uh, Ellen. Hello. I, I think this is the first time we've actually been in the same city at the same time. So. And the city is Chicago. Woo! Where yes. Ellen's based. Yes. So. so that answers our like question, because usually I ask people where you're based. Yes. But what do you do? So I am the lead mobile developer uh, at Spot Hero, as indicated by my shirt, which <laughs> I was coincidentally wearing. I caught uh, her by surprise wearing. Yeah, yeah. Appar apparently I'm just like all in on branding. <laughs> um, so uh, I help build and maintain uh, the iOS and the Android apps. I run the team here. Uh, I manage uh, a small group of developers that, that, that sort of helping bring all of our apps uh, into the, the newest uh, ways of doing everything for both iOS and Android. So how do you get started on both iOS and Android? Like which one comes first and how how did you kind of transition between them? Yeah, so the, the, the interesting thing is that neither one really came first. Um, oh, I It's Windows Phone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, actually, uh, so I actually learned how to program doing both iOS and Android. So I oh. hadn't touched a line of compiled code until September of 2010. Wow. And I uh, had been working in the entertainment business, and I kind of got very tired of that. Mm. And uh, I decided that you know I was spending so much more time trying to figure out how my phone worked than trying to see you know oh okay like can I write a script or can I help a friend produce a script or can I do anything that actually would have kept me involved in the entertainment business? And my brain sort of said like hey this seems like a sign, um, mm -hmm. and. I wanted to keep making stuff, and because I was so fascinated with mobile and the possibilities of mobile, I knew that I wanted to learn both iOS and Android. And that was a little bit easier said than done. Yeah, I mean, uh, both at the same time, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, it was definitely, um, especially because there was only Objective-C when I, when I started. Um, I actually find Java uh, a lot easier to learn than Objective-C, at least in terms of like, you know, at the level of like, here's what a for loop is. And right. Like, here's, yeah. you know, here's, here's why you would want to do any of this. Um, you know, but I think it was also something where at that point it was iOS 4 and it was, uh, I think it was Froyo that was out at that point. Okay. Everybody was really excited that gingerbread was coming out and like mm -hmm. now we're all like, ugh, gingerbread, yeah. no. But like, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I really found it interesting to, to sort of see like, okay, when I, when I started out I wasn't really 100% sure which one I wanted to work with. Right. And, and, now? and now, honestly, <laughs> I, I prefer working in, in iOS, but I really like working with, with Android stuff as well. Go safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, I got, you know, I got I to gotta be honest. And I think, I think it's something where um, a lot of developers who work on, on both sort of are, are, are uh, very much sort of tied to one or the other. They're like, right. I, do, I do this, but I do it reluctantly. And I actually really enjoy working on both types okay. because it's, it's something where you get to see what each platform does well and what each platform does not do well mm -hmm. and learn from that and be able to sort of take some of the concepts and say, okay, how can I take this concept and apply it to what right. I'm trying to do? Yeah, so that's actually a very good segue into like our main topic. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. um, because I watched one of your talks uh, about Android testing, actually, which yeah. is something that I care deeply about. Yeah, so I, I know you cool. also you you also have yeah, the Android test testing talk. Test them. Yes, oh, um, please. So please I'm very test. curious since you were talking about how boring concepts from one platform to the other. Um, how does testing work on iOS? Like how would you kind of compare it with Android and what you wish you could do it on the other side? Yeah, yeah. I, that's, really, that's really a good question. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, testing on iOS is mostly uh, using the XD test framework. Um, it's basically something that's similar to some of the assertions that you have to use in, um, in JUnit testing. Okay. So like um, whenever you in Android import uh, org.junit.assert and then use all of those assertions, right. Basically, in uh, in Xcode and iOS, you have XCT assert. So you have XCT assert equal, XCT assert true, XCT assert, sure. assert false, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's sort of the basic unit testing right. thing. When it comes to UI testing, there's a couple of different options. Um, Apple most recently introduced uh, uh, XCUI testing. 
um, which is based on sort of this older JavaScript framework that they've had for a long time. JavaScript. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that was they do borrow stuff from like, other platforms yeah, as well. Yeah, it was, uh, th I, they had originally built it in JavaScript to sort of help their, their QA engineers have this black box method of testing all of their stuff. Mm -hmm. And so there's really, there's no insight into the actual running process. Oh. It's a complete black box. So it's kind of like UI automator? Yeah, that? yeah. And it's, yeah. I, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's very uh, helpful for a bunch, of, a, a bunch of things, but it's also a real pain in the ass because it's hard to mock anything. And so oh, you have, yes. there's only a couple of very small points where you can pass information back and forth between the two mm. processes. And uh, it makes sort of swapping in a fake server or right. saying, hey, I want to test what happens with this particular thing a real pain in the ass. So um, is there like a, um way to do that like with some other maybe third party libraries yeah or something like that? so there are a couple of different third party libraries mm -hmm. um i know that google actually recently released one oh, yeah it's called um, Earl gray or something yeah just Earl, like expressive yeah <laughs> and it's it's definitely something where they're trying to take some of the expressivity of the espresso testing mm -hmm. and and bring it to ios but right. Um, the one that, and honestly, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to use it uh, whenever I have free time sometime in about 2019. Right, um, exactly. But, but then some other framework will happen. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. by, by then I'm sure like it'll all just be embedded in my brain and then and we'll be done with it. But, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, uh, the, the, the framework that I use and the framework that's sort of uh, a, the biggest third party framework mm -hmm. Um, that iOS developers are able to use for UI testing is called KIF, uh, K-I-F, which stands for Keep It Functional. Um, oh, okay. For some reason, everybody who makes iOS testing frameworks, especially for UI testing, mm -hmm. really likes Futurama jokes. Um, yeah. There was a there was a competing framework. I mean, they are trying really hard to make it KIF, right? Keep it functional. Yeah. It isn't really. <laughs> that, that one wasn't too bad. Yeah. It, it, there was one where the same people who run the KIF framework were, were working on another framework, and I forget exactly what it did, but it was called Leela, L-E-L-A, yeah. and I was just like, okay, now you like you, what? Yeah, you're yeah. trying too hard. Yeah, I feel like they're they're trying really hard. They're not trying too hard until they get to try and get to like Zoidberg. Yeah, yeah. and then they're trying too hard. Right. So, um, so what does Kif do? So Kif um, uses Kif is actually running in the same process mm. um, as your uh, as your tests are, so that you're able to use all of the traditional tools of mocking and, sure. and 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 stuff like that that you really can't use when you're using um, XCUI. And so actually, I want to back up a little bit mm -hmm. because when I do espresso testing, mm -hmm. like when I want to mock, I actually have to set things up ahead of time mm -hmm. so that, well, usually I use dependency injection so that mm -hmm. when the test is running, it knows to grab the mocked object. Right. Like in uh, iOS testing, do you need to do that or you just come? Like, because everything is just passing messages to each other. You can just swap <laughs> things in and out. Who cares about yeah. setting up, like, you know, things properly? There's there's definitely a little bit of that with Objective C. With Swift, it's a little bit it's a little bit less of a of a like whatever things will be fine. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I think it's it's you you use a lot of the same techniques. You use dependency injection. Okay. You use sort of abilities to say like, hey, are we actually testing right now? Or are we in the middle of going through uh, a, a normal application but life not, cycle? Like, I hope not like that's like a global variable that says it's testing uh, and then you set it. Because that's how I did all the segues in my yeah. like, objective is like, oh, oh, the next view controller, let me tell you what you need to do. I'm just like stick yeah. my hand in there and like write some variables. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely uh, there's there's places where that can be the only way to okay. tell. Um, there's also th there's also something where you can sometimes check at runtime whether the uh, system knows about particular classes oh. and say like, hey, if you know that XC test exists, then we're testing. Um, so that's that's something that that's possible, but it's also something where it's not always 100 percent effective. Well, what, what is your preferred way? I guess that would be a better way. To so phrase it. my preferred way is KIF. Um, mm -hmm. I you know both the iOS testing frameworks rely much more heavily on um, accessibility than uh, Espresso does. Right. So Espresso, you can use all the accessibility. Right. Uh, information to tap through all of your mm -hmm. application. But on uh, you can also say, OK, like use the view with the following ID exactly. or use you know all of this other information that you have available gray to you. Gray box, basically. It's yeah. Like, it's yeah, black box with some accessibility yeah. and the hooks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's and it's something where with Espresso, you can actually sort of take an x-ray of what's going on with, right. your, with your app to the point where 
Um, some of the test recording stuff with um, Espresso looks like it's going to be a lot more powerful than the test recording stuff. Oh, uh, that, uh, that, Apple has that too? Like yeah, so in XCUI, you, uh, the, their own framework, you, mm -hmm. can, you can record tests um, as you're going. Mm -hmm. But I think the, I was just watching the video on that since I am pulling together a last minute talk on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, but yeah, it's really, you know, I, I, the, the biggest difference in terms of how the UI testing works on iOS versus Android is that iOS, you basically have something of a gray box where uh, you can't necessarily know like what something's tied to in the code. You right. can only really know like what it's what's available to it. Because like, you're not going to expose the ID to the accessibility framework. Right. It doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that's something where uh, the other thing is if you expose the ID to the accessibility framework, then if you have a blind user trying to use your app, it's going to sound a little right. weird where it's like, yes, we are at, you know, button underscore co continue <laughs> rather than that. just having it say continue. continue. Right. Um, cool. You know, so so that's something I, I think the one big advantage of that is that it allows you to sort of sneak accessibility into your application. Because you need it. Because you get yeah, because you need it for the test. And there's yeah. there's some places where actually um, I've seen the reverse happen where it's like, hey, if we add, ex it, like, we have to add accessibility for like regulatory reasons or something like that. But once we have that, then we can write all these UI right. tests much more easily. So that's yeah. something that I think is a big difference between uh, espresso testing and any of the UI I testing like methods. I that side effect. I feel like not enough people even think about accessibility or testing. But yeah. Better. So now it's like these two things that are good for developers, good for users. Yeah. Um, you can do that kind of yeah, and I think that's I think that's really helpful, but I think it's also something where like it's a major difference in how you think about writing tests and how you right. how you write those tests um, as you're going through them. Cool. So now let's get really specific. So if, can you tell me one thing that you wish that the the way you test on Android can be done in iOS, and then one thing that you can take from iOS and put it in Android? Yeah, um, I think from from the Android side, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's really convenient is being able to launch tests just of one activity. Um, oh, you can't do that because it's accessibility. That's no way to yeah. jump into the middle. There's deep link. There's like yeah. If you implement deep link. I yeah. Guess, if you, you implement, implement deep linking, you yeah. can generally skip through to something. Right. Um, but it's also something where it's like it's not supported terribly well within the iOS system. It goes system. well with the philo like philosophy of that this is a yeah. box that is an app, not like. Hi, I have a view controller. Yeah, exactly. So, so in, in Android, you can just fire up whatever activity uh -huh. you want, and you can test only that activity, yeah. which there are times where it's where it's helpful to be able to test the transition between activities. But it takes forever to get there. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely. you have to click buttons and wait yeah. and whatnot. But one of the things that I ran into is that the first, the first tests that I wrote took forever to run because I was actively going through and tapping through every single thing. Right. And like that would mean that there were certain devices on which the tests that I was running would take like 40 minutes. And that's... Wow, you are dedicated in tracking <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's definitely something where uh, I, I have sort of, I, I have definitely joined the like, uh, I've seen the light of testing, and I find it, you know, I would much rather have a robot break my app than a horde of angry users. So uh, that's, kind of, that's kind of my philosophy of the whole thing. And, and if I can, particularly the reason I like UI testing is that, well, I try to test everything away from the UI that I possibly can mm -hmm. because it's way faster. Right. Um, there is a point at which you really want to know that those flows really work for the user because, yeah. you know, you can have everything unit tested to the ends of the earth. Right. And if it doesn't work for the users, then you're you're out of business. Yeah. That's the bottom line. I've and actually written a test which like theoretically it should pass and it passed pass on my device. Uh, but what happened was that I forgot to put it in the scroll view. Ooh. So when I test it yep. on the smaller screen, yep. then it's like, I cannot click on that yep. button. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank me for writing the test because yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then running on different devices. And, and I mean, to your point, like, a, a unit test will never catch that because yeah, it's absolutely. like the scroll view was missing. So like theoretically, a button was there and you could click, but you yep. actually need to run it on the actual UI to be able to catch those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I think that's really critical um, when you're dealing with multiple different device sizes yeah. and stuff. And that, it's actually why I'm really excited about some of the cloud testing stuff that Google's doing. Right. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to try and start getting our, our Android team up, up and running on all like that. Is there something like that in the iOS world? I mean, um, you don't need to just go and buy all the devices and plug it all in and call it a day. Like, yeah, there are 10 of them, so it's fine. That might be uh, some of the current way, but yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely a couple of different services that, that, that are offered for that, but there's nothing like the first party stuff that, that Google right. offers. 
uh, since they seem to enjoy buying out companies. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, you know, with with Apple, you can buy devices and plug them into uh, something that's running Xcode server. But then Xcode server has its own little limitations. And there's also some cool stuff that um, uh, ha is at Amazon. Mm. Um, and there are some other there are some other places that will just be like, give us your test bundle, and we'll run it on device, and we'll let you know what happens. Um, so it's it's definitely something where there is a big market for all of that, but right. there is isn't sort of the first party. Right. I mean, file. Google, even Google just announced that. Right? Yeah, so yeah. That yeah. is very fresh as well. Yeah. Cool. So you want individual activity testing in iOS. How about that, the other way? That would be nice. Um, is there something that is wonderful in iOS that you wish Android has? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things um, that I enjoy about iOS testing um, is that you're 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 able to run individual tests? Um, I feel like much more easily. Mm. Um, now, <laughs> I say that, but I also am in the middle. Like of in terms of speed, in terms of UI, in, in terms, terms of, of UI. Okay. Um, so you know, on when I'm running um, espresso tests or any kind of individual unit test. One of the things that you can do is you can right click on it and say run just this test. Right. Um, but in iOS, uh, in Xcode, there's a big long list of all of your tests, and you can actually click on a little button, and about 95% of the time actually have that uh, run that one individual test. Huh. So it's really helpful for getting feedback on whatever you're working on directly. Um, really, really quickly without having to rerun every single that test every like single a time. That's a solvable problem. Yeah. Like to collect all the test methods and like put it in a list and so that yeah. Alan can click on it if someone's listening. Yeah. And it's also, <laughs> and, and you know, I will say that, like I said, about 95% of the time, there's definitely still issues with it in Xcode, um, mostly around sort of indexing the tests and sort of knowing, hey, these tests are actually here. Because um, I've seen, I, I've definitely, it's definitely a frustration from time to time, yeah. but when it works, it's awesome. So great! Yeah. so much fun talking to you. Yeah, really great talking to you. You know, I love <laughs> testing. Uh, yeah. But if people want to find you and follow your work, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, they can find me all over the internet. Uh, primarily uh, at designated nerd on Twitter. Um, I am I am a baseball fan. Uh, so uh, that, that's kind of where that came from. But cool. um, yeah, no, I, I'm. So Twitter will be yeah, twi the, sending people to other things. From Twitter, yeah. there are many other internet personalities that I have that, that you can find. So. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming over. I really appreciate Yay. it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>